we are at SF Jazz for a beautiful festival, Red Bharat Festival of Colors. As you know, the festival of Holi is celebrated in a big way in India with colors and everything. And now it's being celebrated right here in San Francisco by many organizations with color. But what we are presenting to you today is a very, very special and unique presentation of Holi. It is a unique orchestra all the way from Brooklyn, New York, who is coming along with Vidya Vox to present a beautiful ensemble of music, a cultural blend that you would never have seen or experienced before. And let's welcome the owner Sunny Jain. Sunny Jain from Red Bharat is the lead of the band and is right here with us. Welcome Sunny to Hello. Yo India TV with me Jasleen Khanuja. And first of all, how's the feel this year in 2019 in San Francisco Bay Area? Feels great. We're uh, we're excited to be here. We're as you said from Brooklyn, New York, but we come to San Francisco at least once or twice a year, and we always love being here. So I believe this band is running from the past 10 years, it's been a decade and you have a really big name, I'm really impressed, I've been hearing you tour around the world and particularly being very popular in Europe and you have presented a typical blend of Bhangra, Jazz, Pop and all that rocking fusion music and culturally presenting this melting pot with your beautiful orchestration. Big congratulations and tell us a little background of how this all started. Thank you, thank you. Well, this kind of started uh, really at five years old is when the seed was planted when I was visiting Dali and my mamaji was getting married and a big brass band came out and it was the first time as a, an American born Indian, you know, being back in India and wondering what is going on with this brass band. So the seed was planted at a very young age. And uh, as you said, about 10, 10, 12 years ago, I had this idea of fusing together the, the 18th century old tradition of brass bands that, that exist in India with the music that I grew up with with here in New York, uh, you know, namely jazz and hip hop and rock, and wanted to bring like-minded people together that were really open in terms of genres of music and had different backgrounds. So we could really create a beautiful blend that was representative of, of the world. Have you had uh, education of music of different uh, uh, cultures, you know, the American music and the typical Indian music? 
Yeah, I mean, I grew up I grew up at home listening to Jane Budgeon's Bollywood classics of the 60s, Hindustani classical music, uh, and then Western music. But then I started studying formally when I was nine years old. I started on symphonic percussion. I quickly fell in love with jazz music at the age of 12 and have studied that for years, went to college for jazz music. And at about 18 or 19, I then started studying tabla, going back to my cultural roots, and uh, then eventually dhol, and, and here we are. And that's what I was wondering, how come a typical Punjabi Jain who is raised in US plays dhol so beautifully? So you have roots back there in Sialkot, you moved all the way to Rajasthan and you're culturally blending things and playing dhol beautifully. You know, dhol is a typical thing that is uh, particularly uh, seen in all the Punjabi festivities. So tell us some intricacies about the dhol. The dhol is a very intricate instrument, and and, and thank you. I, I feel like I'm I'm still learning and always pushing myself. There's so many masters out there. Um, Ravi Dana from from Punjab, also uh, Bap Hussain from from Pakistan. Uh, there's so many amazing dhol players that I look up to, and that I try and learn from. You know, either just YouTube videos or or recordings or whatever I can get my hands on. Um, I fell in love with the instrument after being a frustrated double player, you know. <laughs> why, why frustrated? I mean, you know, I started too late. I started at age 18 and I was very, very involved with jazz drums. So I felt like I started too late. And uh, when I was in India one day, I was picking up a dholki, I was picking up a set of tabla, and then I saw the bhangra dhol. I was like, oh, you know what, let me get one of those and bring it home. And as soon as I started playing it, I fell in love with it. And a friend of mine who had the same tabla guruji back in New York, um, started giving me my first handful of lessons and I just I just fell in love with the instrument uh, it's a very special and intricate instrument when you delve into it and what I love the most about it actually is is the damal about it the Sufi the Sufi dhol drumming of like Pap Hussain and, and the Pakistani drummers the Western Punjab is it's amazing Are you ready to fly with us, SF? Make some noise! Awesome. And you know, your music awakens spiritualism. It has roots embedded in the Indian Raga. So it has a classical base, it has a classical blend into all its uh, um, presentations. And then you, you really touch the soul. Touch the soul as in a great music and also as in uh, the spiritual purity. So how do you do that? What's the key to the success? I don't, I don't know what the key is to quote unquote success, but, but the way I approach it is, is honesty um, and truth in, in what you're trying to put out. Uh, I think it's important to learn traditions and learn the vocabulary that comes from a tradition, but I also know tradition is something that gets established over time. And if we don't understand that things migrate, people migrate, sounds migrate, traditions migrate, then we get stuck in a rut. Um, and so when, when you look at music and, and you're, you're trying to really put stuff together, 
uh, I just try and be honest with who I am, you know, that I'm not trying to emulate a North Indian brass band. I'm not trying to emulate uh, Hindustani classical rock, you know, but these are things I've studied that impact me on a spiritual level and how can I put all these musics together that really inspire me? And you just try and be honest with yourself. Red Barat, how does the name come? Are you inspired by Band Baja Barat? You know, one of the Indian movies also touched upon the wedding traditions. It was it was much before Band Baja Barat. It was uh, it was literally that five year old mm -hmm. seeing my mama G getting married, the Barats, mm -hmm. and the brass band tradition. Um, red is my favorite color, but it also evokes the spirit of weddings. You know, people are always dressed in red, but it, it evokes excitement, energy, rebellion, revolution, love. Mm -hmm. There's many connotations to it. So Red Barat just seemed to make sense. Awesome. So, you know, we've seen you making presentations in White House, in Harvard University, and in several other prominent places. How's your experience? Uh, we're, we're always very, very fortunate and very happy to perform anywhere where we can. You know, tonight we're performing at SF Jazz, and we love this room. We love the people that come here, the people that work here. Um, the White House was an amazing experience. This was under Obama's term, just to be clear. And uh, <laughs> we got to be clear about that. <laughs> You're too frank. <laughs> and um, yeah, everywhere, you know, we, we tour Europe a lot and everything is different from very intimate clubs where maybe there's only 100 people to playing a festival stage in Spain with 10,000 people. Uh, so there's, these are all very beautiful experiences and, and we try and just be in the moment and cherish it and be one with people. So tell us a little more about who are the diverse members of your band and how did you group them together? Mm -hmm. uh, the trumpet player is Sunny Singh. He's someone I've known for, I think he's, he's the longest standing person I've known in the band, uh, probably 15 years we go back playing in other groups. Uh, he's a trumpet player and a singer. Um, and then John Eltieri is our sousaphone player. I've known him also for 15 plus years. Uh, he comes from a classical also uh, a rap background, so it's a very interesting com combination. Um, Lynn Ligamari is a soprano saxophone player who's been with us also since the beginning, and she comes from a jazz background, so to speak, I guess. Chris Edelton is our drummer. He comes from a 
comes from everything. He comes from an R&B background, uh, a hip hop background, jazz, prog rock, comes from everything. We have a Rayut Regev on trombone, and she also comes from a little bit of a jazz background, but also world music. Um, yeah, I think I went through everyone. Yeah, Sonny, Lynn, Rayut, John, and Chris. Yeah. <laughs> So how much practice do you do and how do you put different compositions on the same plate? Um, compositions come about differently. I, I write primarily for the band. I write probably 75 to 80 percent of the of the music and then I arrange and orchestrate probably 90 percent of it and then Sonny Singh also brings in compositions. John Altieri brings in compositions. Uh, we have our different ways of, of working. I'm, I'm very specific in what I want in my arrangements but then leave the last 10% of the band playing and being creative with the music um, and I write everything down. John writes everything down as well. Sonny doesn't write the music down, he'll have parts and we'll all put it together. Um, so it's, it's a different process depending upon who the composer is and what the music that they're bringing in but I think ultimately it's all the people in the band and playing live and playing the song many times of where the song comes to life. It has to come to life off the page, it has to come to life off the rehearsal room, and it comes to life in front of people on the bandstand. What happens, you know, if on a particular occasion or in a particular instance, people are not in sync at a particular time and then you th think that, oh, they're doing something that we didn't decide and suddenly, you know, some team member is going in a different direction. It might as well bring life at, during Absolutely. a live performance, Absolutely. but it might not be something you had well thought of and decided and it's off sync. What do you do in such cases? Well, so that's a beautiful statement that you made, but 
I wouldn't say it's off sync. I would say it's in the moment, and what makes it beautiful is you're right, it's a, it's a curveball, it's a surprise, it's being in the moment, it's improvisation. Mm -hmm. But all of us in the band embrace that and know that that's what this music is about. It's it's one of the cornerstones of the band is to have improv improvisation and have spontaneity. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that, that does happen many times where I'm either thrown off like what's going on right now, but I trust the people I play with, and we trust the moment, and that and that's why we're able to travel together. And it's and that's why it never feels off sync, you know. Awesome. So what in particular do you bring from the Rajasthani background? Tonight what we're playing, we're playing a Bhojpuri song mm -hmm. that was one of the first songs that became known as Chutney music in, uh -huh. in Trinidad. Mm -hmm. And there was a singer named Dropati mm -hmm. that brought the song called More Ghari Suno, mm -hmm. which is an old wedding song uh, that talks about, it's about listen, it means listen to my story, but it's a classic Bhojpuri song mm -hmm. and it comes from UP and everything. So this became known in the mid 60s as one of the chutney songs in Trinidad with the fusion of like Caribbean and Indian folks. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So today you're also playing with a guest artist with your Vox who is also known for being a great blender, you know, she also blends the same way you blend the American and Indian cultures and the tunes and the rhythms and everything. So how did you join hands with her because normally she's seen with a different band. Yeah, well, so she has her own band here. Mm -hmm. So Festival of Colors, it's it's Red Bra Festival of Colors, is something we've been doing for eight years. And the idea, it's based around Holi, which obviously is a sprinkling of colors. And the idea of this is to showcase colors and the idea of the South Asian diaspora. There's mm -hmm. so many Pakistanis, Bangladeshis, Indians, Sri Lankans, people that come from the South Asian subcontinent mm -hmm. that are here in America now. And we have different creative expressions that are coming out in different ways, whether it's Red Barat, whether it's a rapper, or whether it's a folk artist, you know, everyone has their different take on it. So the idea every year is to curate a festival and to have different South Asians artists with us. So this year we were super lucky and happy to have Vidya Vox with us. She has her band here. Um, she's someone I've known for a number of years. We actually played the Obama White House together. Um, and I've been wanting her on this festival of colors for a number of years and finally she agreed to it this year. So yeah, you're in for a treat tonight. Awesome, awesome, look forward to it.
numerous concerts that you have been doing worldwide, which is the one you would want to uh, remember forever? You know, something that has really st uh, struck a chord in your memory and why? Mm. One thing that always sticks out in my mind, and I do often say this when, when I'm asked this question, is about eight years ago, it wasn't a performance, it was a master workshop we were, we were doing in Elgin Community College, uh, just on the outskirts of Chicago. It was for maybe only 80 students. But there was this older gentleman in the background, Midwestern, Caucasian man, looked like, looked like a biker, didn't look like he would come to this, didn't look like this would be of interest to him. Yes, I'm stereotyping, and, that, and that's why this makes it interesting. He stood up and he raised his hand and he said, I've never heard of music like this before. And I was wondering where he was gonna go with that. And he said, I had no idea what to expect, but I wanted to come and check it out, and this is really beautiful music. And where can I find other bands that do what you guys do? This is very interesting to me. And he said, he, you know, he normally listens to Leonard Skinner and ZZ Top. Like he went down the list of what you'd expect he'd listen to. And it was, it was beautiful for me to just be broken out of my shell of, of borders, of what I'm always trying to, trying to do no matter what in, in music and with people, but finding myself in this, in the stereotyping of this, of this man, but also him sharing this really courageous thing to say in front of you know a bunch of students, a bunch of 20 year old students. And I don't know, that's always stuck with me. That's, it, it just, it speaks to why I enjoy doing what I do. Um, it's for the truth and honesty of it and to be able to touch people like that and open people up. What's the final message you want to give out to your India TV viewers who are watching you around the world? Thank you so much. We love you. And let's keep peace amongst us. Thank you so much. I'm Sunny Jane from Red Bharat. Thank you for listening to Yo India TV.